meeting, I'd like to call to order the town board meeting for Thursday, August 8th, beginning at 7.13 p.m. Uh, Jamie, if you'd call the roll. Yes. Chairman John Merrick. Present. Supervisor Bansky. Yeah, I'm here. Supervisor Wolf. Yes. Supervisor Laska. Present. Supervisor Fisher. Present. Attorney De La Mora. Present. Planner Rai Barcha. Present. And Clerk Treasurer Salantine. I'd like to put in, I'd like in the minutes that Supervisor Bansky is not here. He is appearing via a video camera and is not in the town hall. Uh, with that, we'll open it up to citizen comments. Anybody? Going once, going twice, and we'll move on. Uh, item number three, uh, approval of the minutes from May 2nd, May 21st, May 21st special meeting. June 13th, road bid openings. June 13th, regular meeting. June 27th, July 11th, and July 25th, all of 2013. Unless there's an objection, I think we can take them all at once. to the July 25th meeting minutes. Um, Supervisor Bansky, at that meeting, you had stated, and this is verbatim, with regard to those procedural rules, and those were some simple parliamentary procedural rules that I had asked to be followed. The Department of Justice assisted State's Attorney General has recommended to me that I recommend to the town board that we are to ignore those as we could have been violating the open meetings laws. I asked for the next day the name and contact information of the Department of Justice employee you spoke with. I am this is not and you are very next. Not the meeting minutes, John. These are the meeting minutes. And your comment back was, I did not speak with the DOJ person. So what I would like to know, so that the meeting minutes are accurate, what was actually recommended and by whom, and which one of your statements is correct? Pardon me? I'll stand by the meeting minutes as they're listed. So then you're communication and writing the very next day that you did not speak with the DOJ person is not accurate. That is not part of the meeting minutes. I would like the meeting minutes to react, reflect accurately whether or not you were instructed to tell the town board that we are to ignore parliamentary procedure rules or not. You're twisting and manipulating words to incite an argument, and those are not part of the meeting minutes and the motion that is currently on the floor. Nothing is twisted or manipulated. The words are in type, in print, and I'd like to know which statement is correct and accurate. If you'd like to have more information, file another public record request as we've done in the past, and I'll comply with it. I would like to amend, offer an amendment to the motion then to approve the meeting minutes without the July 25th and we'll, I would like to table the July 25th minutes to a date certain the next meeting at which point we get, get some clarification as to whether or not we were instructed by a Department of Justice attorney to ignore parliamentary procedure rules. I'll clarify. You, you were to instructed I'll second the motion to table. There's no discussion to call for the question, please. Once more, Supervisor Fisher, I'm sorry, you were interrupted. I am seconding the motion to table. To 
to a date certain. I'm already a first and a second to approve the minutes on the board. Would you accept the friendly amendment? No. Nope. <clears throat> I stand by my motion. the second, the amendment to the first motion, please. The amendment would be to approve all minutes ex excluding the July 25th to be tabled to the next town board meeting. August 22nd. Uh, let's do a roll call vote. Before we vote, how do we do that when we've got a first and a second already on a motion? That will come next. You're voting on the amendment. What are we voting on now? The amendment. With the tabling of the July 25th. <clears throat> Chairman Merrick. Yes. Supervisor Bansky. Yes. Supervisor Wolf. No. Supervisor Laska. No. Supervisor Fisher. Yes. Motion approved. So now we go back to the top. Now the motion on the table is the amended motion. Okay. Please read the amended motion into the once more, please. The amended motion that was approved was to <coughs> approve all of the meeting minutes except July 25th, 2013 town board minutes to be tabled to the next meeting, August, town board meeting, August 22nd. Uh, let's do a roll call vote so that everybody is clear who's voting because it's difficult to hear Mr. Bansky. Oh, now it's, now it's Chairman Merrick. Yes. Supervisor Bansky. Yes. Supervisor Wolf. No. Supervisor Laska. No. Supervisor Fisher. Yes. Motion. Motion carries. On to number four. Plan Commission uh, items, discussion, and possible action on the following the land use map revision for the Five Diamonds Ballpark located at West 234 South 3555 Les Paul Parkway. <clears throat> The recommendation from the Plan Commission and the Town Planner was to uh, accept the land use map revision. Motion to table and a review of unpaid bills. Mr. Chairman, I don't think a motion to table can tied to some specific action, so I think that's a proper motion. It's simply, a, it's simply a motion to table, a motion to table to a later date. It, it's actually one of the recommendations or conditions of the town planner to verify all the bills are paid. That's not correct. What the recommendation of the town planner was that all the bills for this application are paid. That's true. Can we verify that? Can we verify what? That they've paid all the bills in association with this particular application. Other than the ones that are outstanding, I, well. Well, it sounds like the answer is no, we cannot. We're checking. They're, they're right. We're checking. We're getting to receive bills. So, I mean, that's are, there any, are there any bills for this application that are outstanding that have not been paid? that have been invoiced. I don't think there's any new ones out there, other than they're probably in limbo between the process. Yeah. Or, Jamie, do you know what the total fees are at this point for this application? Uh, I do not. Ballpark? No pun intended? No. <laughs> um,
probably in the ballpark of 300 to 350. Okay, so we're not talking about a lot of money. So there is one bill that has been uh, sent out on July 31st. And that's it. Regarding this issue. Okay. Question for Attorney Hector. Question for Attorney Hector. It appears that there's going to be, with a vote of yes on this issue, it appears there will be a termination of the CUP. Am I correct? That was the intent of the um, motion, and certainly the recommendation made by the um, plan commission. However, uh, it is my opinion that until such time as the county has approved both the uh, amendment to the land use plan and the uh, ordinance, um, the conditional use permit provisions continue to control. But if there's a termination of the conditional use permit, how can there be control? I think at this point we would lose some leverage in unpaid bills that were brought up about a couple of months ago uh, for a chance to review and waive. I believe strongly that if we keep things in place till that gets reviewed, then we can look at this next step. Mike, we have all the leverage in the world. We can go after their property. It has um, to, to tie bills to a land use chain is not a proper use. That's not uh, a proper use of our leverage. That's that's not what that's there for. That's not what we're here for. We're here to approve a land use change, and that's not tied to bills. My mind has not changed. The only thing is, is what controls, if we do this, we have no control to get our bills paid. And when they came through with their uh, plan of operation, all that was filled out in that plan of operation that I recall of was their time. That was it. So we're going to totally give up our control by the conditional use permit with no plan of operation filled out that what, I saw. What, when you say we're going to give up control, you, you mentioned two different types of control. One was the control of getting bills paid, and the other is control of their business. Which one are you speaking to? Well, I guess I'm speaking of both. Not control their, their business, but to control the use of the property. So that if they're doing things which it sounds like they still might be doing, that is not quite going along with their plant, uh, with their condition use, if we go up their condition use with no fill out plan of operation, how do we take care of problems that arise? We had a plan of operation at the last, when we approved the zoning, there was a plan of operation that was filled out, number one. Number two, going back to the issue of getting invoices paid. If we so choose, we can go and attack their property for those invoices. Having a conditional use does not give us any leverage to collect bills. There is nothing in a conditional use that gives us uh, any authority to go and collect bills. That is based on our ability to levy a tax or a lien on their property. Okay, but if, unless you've got a different plan of operation, the plan of operation that came in front of me at one of the board meetings had their time of day operation and that was the only thing that was filled out on that whole sheet. I think I have a different one. 
then we're voting on stuff that we don't have the documentation for? The zoning, the zoning's already done. This is a land use map revision, and you, we all had their plan of operation. This is for the land use map revision. This has nothing to do with the zoning change. Um, this is a, a different issue. <clears throat> yeah, but we don't, I don't have their plan of operation filled out. So now you're asking me to give up even more control by matching the plan map with their zoning. Excuse me. Mr. When you say when you say giving up control, when, uh, when you say giving up control, control of what? Control of their business? You have no control of their business. It's not yours to control. Yes, Mr. Rebarchek. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I think a point of clarification needs to be made that in my recommendation to terminate the conditional use. <clears throat> The Planning Commission and the Board needs to be made aware that per your ordinance, Section 13-2-9, in order to terminate a conditional use, it has to go through the public hearing process. And that's usually the case in most communities. So I think as the town attorney had mentioned, we should be waiting until the Waukesha County Board approves the rezone and approves the land use map. And then we need to take it upon ourselves to bring it back before the town and properly terminate the conditional use. And that would be per section 13-2-9, letter H. So you're, you're going to be protected. It's not that just by approving the land use map amendment tonight that the conditional use goes away at 9 o'clock tonight. That's not the case. Okay. We still have to go through the process and terminate the CU. Okay, I guess the question I, got, I have then, so as far as you know, the county has not approved their rezone? No, they're waiting for the town to do the land use amendment, and they're going to take up the rezone and the land use amendment together, Waukesha County required us or asked us if they could hold off on the rezone until the town approved the land use amendment, and then they are going to review both together. Okay, so then the county hasn't approved anything yet. That's we correct. haven't sent it to them yet. There. Okay, I have talked to a resident that said they were told that they can run their hours till 1030 because they've been rezoned. Well, if the county hasn't approved them, then they haven't been rezoned. That's correct. That's correct. Well, they were told that they could run until 1030 because they're apart now. They who? A resident. Who told them? A resident was told. Well, who told them? Apparently they were given the incorrect information. I mean, were they, was that somebody within the town that told them that? Yes. I think we should educate our town staff then. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman? Yes. We have a recognition. Um, two or three things here. We've got a bunch of um, things on the table. First, um, for plan over bar check there, I have a uh, different take uh, than you do with regard to the conditional use. When the town voted to rezone the property, um, from my perspective, the conditional use which only, is only applicable if it is a residential property, was voided or went away at that point in time. I agree it's still in place until the county acts upon it, but from my perspective, the town has finished acting on that part of it. There's no need for any other public hearing. That's no longer there for consideration because the town has rezoned it to public use. Um, second point that I would have um, I guess for Attorney De Moore, I agree with Chairman Merrick. It is not appropriate to attempt to tie uh, any kind of unpaid or disputed bills to a change in the master land use plan. Uh, I think that's most inappropriate. Do you disagree? The town has certain provisions in other areas which are conditioned on the payment of appropriate fees. The plan commission itself made a recommendation to you this evening conditioned on payments of fees accrued with regards to this particular application. It is more a matter of town policy and more importantly consistency in the enforcement of that town policy. Um, the modification of the land use plan is something that 
occurs very infrequently, so uh, as such, I cannot cite to you any instance in my experience as town attorney where that question has arisen. And I would defer to <coughs> your long term of service on the Planning Commission uh, for that history. I, I have a follow-up question. Is it appropriate or even legal for us to tie a land use change to an invoice? I attempted to answer that by saying that it's up to the town to determine the policy. You are exercising legislative judgment with regards to the change that is going to take place here, namely ultimately the zoning. And in order to get to that point in other situations where someone wants uh, a rezoning enacted, it is very typical for associated costs related to the rezoning to be satisfied so that a benefit that accrues to one particular property owner is the cost of that is not borne by the town as a whole. But that's not what we're talking about. Once again, we've all agreed that the bills for this particular issue should be paid. That's what the recommendation from the Plan Commission is to the Town Board. We agree with that. We're talking about past bills. Is it proper to tie past bills to a current issue, number one? And then the second part of the question would be, if those invoices have not been satisfied by tax time, can those invoices be placed on their property tax roll? I do not believe that you can place those invoices on the tax roll. I believe that it will be necessary to look at the memorandum of understanding and in the absence of a voluntary payment of that, it probably will fall to the town to either abandon the collection of that money or sue the party if they are unwilling to pay. And as to your first question, is it proper? Again, that is not a legal question. Uh, I've indicated to you that the judgment is a policy judgment. I do not know of anything in the town ordinances that bar that kind of conditioning. And the conditioning would be simply that the town will defer taking final action on this matter until that preliminary issue, which is associated with the land use of this property, is resolved to the mutual satisfaction of the town and to the property owner. A question for Attorney Dale Moreland. I guess put it a different way. If this town board against the unanimous recommendation of this Town Plan Commission, chooses to deny the land rezone or the land use amendment tonight. And the sole reason that is given for the denial is because there are some disputed invoices which the town has given to the petitioner. I want you to assume those things happen, okay? And the petitioner, price foul, sues the town, brings an action against the town or whatever, can you successfully defend the town for taking that action based on that reason, solely in that reason alone? I believe I would be able to primarily because no one has a right to receive a land use change. The only thing that people have a right to with regards to the zoning on a piece of property is that if they are using it and they are relying on that zoning, at such time as the jurisdiction that controls the zoning changes the zoning, the property owner has a right to continue that use as a non-conforming use. All the questions. There was 
motion and second in the interest of lessening the argumentative mode, which has been tr hopefully trying to achieve by all of us here, this is why I requested this to be tabled. And calling the question now will help that happen. I'm not, I'm not sure I understand calling the question. Okay. Calling, well, calling for a vote. Calling the question. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I guess I have a problem, and Hector, you can help us with this. The parliamentary procedure, a motion to table, is not debatable. Correct? Correct, sir. So. All right, and we have been discussing this at length, so I don't think the motion is proper. If it's simply a motion to table, and somebody wants to make that motion, and nothing more, without any discussion, but it's not proper to have, we've been going on for about 15, 20 minutes here, a discussion with the motion to table. That's not proper. What's my well, motion, Jim? I'm not presiding over this meeting, Mr. Fisher, and I think that oftentimes you have presiding officers allow members of a body to discuss a matter uh, although it may not be in strict conformity with Robert's rules of order as a matter of an extension of uh, personal privilege or just courtesy. Uh, beyond that, I am not running this meeting. Correct. I want to uh, just clarify one item. Um, under the, in the memorandum of understanding any time that a petitioner comes before the plan commissioner and the town board. We have section 3-1-24 uh, written in there. Any liability imposed by this section shall be paid to the town within 30 days of the date of billing, and default thereof shall be added to the next succeeding real estate bill for the real estate owned by any recipient of such services as a special assessment against the property. So we have a great deal of ability to correct any debt, collect any debt. Jamie, what's my motion? I just have a motion to table. I okay. didn't put anything Was it seconded? Said. No. I thought Joe Bansky <coughs> seconded that Joe, motion. Joe seconded it. Then I missed it. You didn't care. And that's why I'm calling the question at this time to prevent the discussion and the arguments that will occur. Call for vote. For clarification, the motion is to table. Is it to table to a date certain or uncertain, Mike? The, the motion is to table. To a date certain or uncertain? You have to clarify it. Pending review. <clears throat> no. To a date certain uncertain. or uncertain? Uncertain. Fair enough. Roll call, please. Chairman Merrick? No. Supervisor Bansky? Yes. Supervisor Wolf? Yes. Supervisor Laska? Yes. Supervisor Fisher? No. Motion approved. And moving on, 4B, accessory building for Troy Semendal. The applicant is Troy Semendal. The recommendation from the plan commission and the town planner was to uh, approve with a condition that the overhangs are not used for storage or not at a later date enclosed in any way. Question? Yes. Um, this is probably for Attorney Hacker. With eight, almost nine acres of land, can this land be split? And the accessory building would be on a property less than the initial 8.9 acres. Is that possible? <clears throat> Any division of the land in question here would be subject to uh, prior approval by the town and the circumstances then existing uh, on the property at that point in time. Um, so, depending on 
circumstances at that point in time, if it ever comes to pass, uh, the building may have been moved, may have been removed. Uh, it would be speculation. Uh, but the only thing I can tell you with certainty is that at this point in time, uh, the property owner um, is bound by the current ordinances which affect the lot as it currently exists. And as I understood the planner's um, recommendation, uh, all aspects of this proposed building are in conformity, uh, save the question of the height, and that is something that can be adjusted uh, by the uh, owner, depending on where he ultimately cites the building to uh, uh, satisfy the town restrictions with regards to setback. Another quick question. Uh, did we talk about a deed restriction? I'm oh, sorry. Did we speak of a restriction, a deed restriction there in the event of or governing any type of business that would be run off the property? I think that's a standard in our ordinances. If it's over 600 it's square feet, check. you can't run a business in it. So Condition number four in staff report. Thank you. Hmm? Any other discussion? I move to uh, I make a motion to accept it. Second. Second. Um, let's do a roll call vote so we, everybody can be heard. Chairman Merrick? Yes. Supervisor Vansky? Stay. <clears throat> Supervisor Wolf? Yes. Supervisor Laska? Yes. Supervisor Fisher? Yes. Motion approved. Moving on, 4C, plan of operation for Tally's Tap and Eatery, LLC. Owners are Robert and Janet Tallinger. The uh, recommendation from the town planner and the plan commission was to approve. Motion to accept the plan commission's approval. Second. Uh, discussion? See. Okay. Chairman Merrick? Yes. Supervisor Bansky? Yes. Supervisor Wolf? Yes. Supervisor Laska? Yes. Supervisor Fisher? Yes. Motion approved. And on to D, plan of operation for My Guy Auto LLC. Um, the owner of the property is currently John Salmon, and the petitioner is Mr. Sindic. Uh, the recommendation from the town planner and the town plan commission was to approve. Question? Yes. Do you know if there's going to be a tow truck? Park there all the time or at any time. Um, Mr. Syndic, are you still in the audience? Looks like he's gone. We don't know. Anybody else? Is there a motion to approve? Second. All right, Brian Fisher motions to approve. Mike, will second. you still second it? All right. right. Chairman Merrick? Yes. Supervisor Bansky? Yes. Supervisor Wolf? Yes. Supervisor Laska? Yes. Supervisor Fisher? Yes. Motion approved. <laughs> 